Hello, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston. Now, in this video tutorial, we're going to get to grips with the basics of creating a PHP file, what extension we're going to give it, and how we're going to set up the inside of the file to ensure that our web server deals with it correctly. Because PHP isn't part of our web server package, we may need to specify in Apache to look out for PHP files. And you can do this in your http.conf file that we've already looked at when we've set up our Apache uh, installation. Now, PHP is server side, so whatever you, whatever you uh, write in between PHP tags will not be, no will not be able to be viewed by um, people. Usually when you create an HTML, HTML document, you'd start with your HTML tags, you'd obviously do it, it do it much more correctly than this, but you'd start with your HTML tags, you'd create your body tags, and different uh, information and different functions, the functionality of the page will go in different places. Now in PHP, it's a lot more loosely structured, and the way we do things is we use PHP tags. Now on their own, PHP tags look like this. So you can see that it is a um, it's a mirror image of a less than sign first of all, then a greater than sign at the end here. In between are these ex uh, question marks, sorry, and then just the words PHP. It can also be specified like this. Now this might look a bit odd to you um, at first. However, what we actually do is just after PHP here, we come down and everything we want to write in PHP goes in here. So every time you set up a new page and you want to include some level of PHP in it, for example, you can combine PHP and HTML in a page. We could have our PHP tags here and we could also have our HTML tags down here. So whenever you start up a new page and you're going to include PHP, you want to create a tags like that or like that. I'd probably recommend the use of the PHP not notation at the end, at the start. So these are your PHP tags. PHP code will go inside here. So how do we go about saving our file so it can be interpreted properly by our web browser or our web server, sorry. So we go ahead and we save the file. Now. I have a folder inside my htdocs folder called series and this is where the videos or the uh, code for the videos for the whole series will go. I've created a particular folder here called first file. So this is how we're going to access it in our web browser. We're going to go to localhost, series, first file and then we're going to have our file name here. So let's just call this document. Uh, let's say, uh, well we'll call it index.php because typically an Apache installation will take an index.php and index.html files as default files to be loaded inside a folder. And by that I mean if your file is named anything else, so I'm going to call this just for file.php for now, remember we're using .php, you can just to be sure choose all files here and enclose that in um, in uh, double quotation marks just to make sure your text editor saves it with a correct file extension. So let's save this. We've shown that we've saved this as a PHP document. My text editor context has automatically turned on syntax highlighting for PHP. This just means that PHP uh, code and different different aspects of code will be highlighted so we can read things easier. For example, variables are green and function names are typically um, um, a gray color and things like keywords so for example for each uh, which is a language construct are blue and it depends so strings can be brown for etc etc et so we've got this file and we've saved that now if we come in here and refresh our browser you can see that the file appears here now if I click on this that's our PHP document ready to go. We can start programming and we can start displaying output to the user and calculating. And as you can see, if you've clicked to view the page source, 
there's nothing there. So let's combine some HTML with PHP and see what happens. And you can see now that by just including some HTML tags and refreshing the page, you can see that these actually show up. However, our PHP code will be up here. However, it won't be shown because it's interpreted by our web server. Program that's where everything's sort of calculated, and then we display the output that we want using PHP. So it's a server side scripting language as opposed to HTML, which is just tags that are interpreted by different browsers. Okay, so like I said earlier, you can name your file and give it a specific file name, or you can choose to name it index.php. So I'm going to start up some PHP tags and I'm going to save this as index.php. Now, this is in this directory if we go back. So when I refresh, index.php will automatically be opened. We won't have this index of forward slash series forward slash first file. We won't be able to see the files. We'll just be presented with the index.php page. And to test this, I'm going to use a simple command in PHP to demonstrate this. I'm going to say echo and this is my output. There's a tutorial on echo and what it does or you'll see what it does but how it works and, and a bit more information about it. So for now I'm just going to be outputting this to the screen. So let's refresh the page. You can see that we've automatically gone to index.php. My browser doesn't show it up here but let's just uh, type that in manually so we can definitely see. So the page, it's automatically gone to index.php. If I just choose to go to the file, uh, the folder I mean, is exactly the same. So these are different conventions of naming files. If you name something anything else other than what's specified, index.php and index.html I think are default specified in an Apache configuration. However, normal files are not named to open by default. So that's a bit about naming files and how you should name and uh, create your files. And you've learned also how to set your PHP tags up ready to code inside them.